It should come as no surprise to you good people that I am an Ace Attorney fan. My profile picture is Miles Edgeworth for Pete's sake, so you can understand my elation when an anime adaptation of the series was first announced a wee 13 months ago. It went against all odds, the first game is 15 years old now, you just don't get new modern anime for source material that's that old, especially when it's not a manga. My mind ran wild with thoughts of the weird, wacky moments and subtle but satisfying character arcs that would soon be brought to life. So I waited, months passed by, and the premiere date slowly but surely drew near. A PV was released of dubious animation quality, but I was not perturbed. I wanted to hope and have faith that these games would be done justice, that it would be an anime I could praise to hell and back as a worthy representation of Ace Attorney. It's possible I set the bar too high. Phoenix Wright, or as he is known in Japanese, Ryuichi Naruhodo, is a fledgling defense attorney thrown into his first case in trial with little notion of what to do or how to do it. Guided by his mentor, Mia Fei, Wright successfully navigates his venture into the courtroom, proving the innocence of a childhood friend who had been falsely accused of murder. This marks the beginning of a long and illustrious career for young Phoenix, tackling case after case against corrupt prosecutors whose only goal is to get the defendant declared guilty, regardless of their actual guilt. Backed up by the spirit medium Mia Fei, Mia's sister, Wright's arrival signals a change in the courtroom, a new attitude of law that prioritizes truth over all else. Gyakuten Saiban, the Japanese title for Ace Attorney, more directly translates to Turnabout Trial, highlighting one of the series' major hooks. That the deck is invariably stacked against Wright, but against all odds, he always manages to turn things around in just the nick of time. First off, before saying anything about the show itself, props to Crunchyroll for providing two subtitle tracks for this series, one with the original Japanese names, and the other with the localized English names. It shows a degree of understanding for the fans, remembering that nearly all of us, myself included, do not know this man as Naruhodo, but as Phoenix Wright, and know this as not a roll of sushi, but a burger. I similarly have to give praise to the casting, regardless of the actual quality of the anime, which I will of course be getting into momentarily, the voice cast is strong, mainly with Yuki Kaji as Wright and Aoi Yuki as Maya. Kaji has done enough screaming and shouting in his time to nail the oomph needed for an OBJECTION! While Yuki is in fact one of my favorite anime voice actresses, cause her range is just something else. And I hope I will one day be able to give similar praise to the dub, which I should as long as they cast Sam Regal as Wright. But on to the show itself. I said the same in my review of the Danganronpa anime, but if there is at least one positive thing to say about this adaptation, it's that you can't fault it for being faithful to a point. Most cases and trials are sped up or slightly altered to fit into the narrow time constraints of two or three episodes, but the anime does recreate much of the music, sprites, and shots that existed in the original game. The only real changes to the courtroom are out of necessity, the first being that they actually swap the position of the defense and prosecution in order to be more cohesive with the shots of the bench, since when you think about it, it is a little weird that on far shots the game shows right facing left, but on close shots he's facing right. So that's a rather obvious fix, and one I would approve of. Likewise, TV screens have been added to the judge's pedestal throne thing, which is again entirely understandable as a grounded way to display visual evidence. In the game, a picture of any evidence just covers the screen of the handheld, and you assume everyone involved in the trial somehow perfectly sees it, but that wouldn't entirely make sense in context of a show, so changes like that aren't gonna bother me. They make sense and work to build a more coherent, realistic structure for the flow of the trials. Not to say that realistic is exactly what Ace Attorney is shooting for, which it shouldn't, and it doesn't. Even if it's not presented entirely well, this anime does maintain the feel of some things from the original. The world is still offbeat and wacky, populated with nothing but weirdos and lunatics, with a sense of oddball tongue-in-cheek humor to match, i.e. Wright still cross-examines a parrot. It also manages to capture a slight sense of play in the game in certain moments, like a scene from episode 4 where Wright just frantically presses everything in the witness testimony, hoping for a contradiction, which I think everyone who's played any of the games can sympathize with. The trial climaxes can still muster up some emotion, it's hard not to feel a little something when people are confronting the death of their loved ones and the horrors of their inner demons, and it still makes you root for Wright to come out on top cause the bad guy is such an ass and it'll be the best thing ever seeing him crumble apart. It's not perfect, it's not even good, but there are enough flashes of what made the game so popular that it does feel better than it could. And just as there are these flashes within the normal show, so too do they exist in the openings and endings. Not that first opening, god no, but the second one is better in literally every conceivable way, focusing more on the fun campy aspect of the series rather than indulging us with terribly generic imagery, like walking along a beach and through a field of sunflowers. First ending's not bad either, focusing solely on Maya Fey, and tells a simple but neat little character story with some nice art, too.
If only that nice art could have been seen anywhere else. The Ace Attorney anime is produced by A1 Pictures, and say what you will about A1, the one thing they usually have going for them is shows that at least look not terrible. But that fact is sadly not at all apparent here. Dual Destiny's cutscenes looked far better, though that was Bones, so maybe I shouldn't be so surprised. Rigid poses and stilted expressions are the norm here, combined with a general lack of detail and nuance that could be almost painful, along with fairly frequent jump cuts in minor scenes, which there's little excuse for in animation. The CGI crowd in the courtroom is embarrassing, the apparent proportions of the judge don't seem physically possible, this food looks photoshopped onto the scene, Detective Gumshoe has apparently been possessed by Satan, there's just so much wrong here that I almost wouldn't know where to start. What's arguably worse is that it's not even bad all the time. It's bad most of the time, but there are just enough scenes that look competent, it's nothing but salt in the wound. You know what this feels like? It feels like something they knew they make money on with the lowest caliber of acceptable animation, so that's what they shot for without stretching anything. And these problems even extend to the first opening I mentioned. Look at how janky this run cycle is. And you know what's even better? Just, just wait. This really hammers home the phoning it in feel of it all. Watch how the first opening ends. <laughs> I didn't edit anything, the song just cuts like that, which never failed to kill me whenever I'd watch an episode. But my biggest issue with this anime is something I don't think A1 actually reasonably could have done anything about. In order to fit two whole games into a 24 episode span of time, the cases would, as I said earlier, need to be sped up. You can't spend 3, 4, 5 hours on a case like you can in the game. Realistically, you need to be snappy and move on to the next one within a few episodes to avoid losing viewer interest with the minutia of testimony and investigation. But this manifests in unavoidable problems. When you speed up explanations or evidence gathering or even the depth of one testimony, details are going to be lost. Details that would have pointed to the truth of a case, which instead now feels like questionable leaps in logic from evidence A and B, somehow leading us to argument K. You start to lose the connection and sympathy for Wright that the games cultivate, because he seems like a genius, or at least a very lucky person, that somehow manages to detect every contradiction within seconds. And that disconnect between the viewer and Wright is what really loses ground with this anime. In the games, you play as Phoenix. You are Phoenix. You know everyone he talks to, every place he investigates, the exact stakes of every trial and situation. But here, due to a combination of the change in medium, which cuts out things like internal monologue and the sped up pacing, the bond grows thin to the point of tearing. The easiest example to make is that Phoenix, more than once, will pull out evidence the audience has never seen before, a final case-breaking clue whose existence was never made clear. Half the fun of these kind of stories is trying to figure out what happened for yourself, piecing together the dissonant fragments in a way that makes sense, which is of course largely impossible when you lack information. The mid-season gap between the two adapted games, the first Ace Attorney and Justice for All, is another point where the series kind of struggles, putting aside the fact that they skipped Rise from the Ashes, which is understandable but oh so very disappointing, the passage of time from the first arc to the second is very poorly conveyed. The second game takes place six months after the first, and some things have occurred to warrant that time skip being important, but in the anime it seems like maybe a day or two had gone by. The extent of the setting and its impact on the characters is difficult to discern when it's hazy where we even are in the timeline. Lastly, this is a complaint I've had with the games as well, so you could perhaps call it a faithfully adapted flaw. Every side character, basically everybody that is not an attorney, prosecutor, or law enforcement agent has a shtick that is their thing, and that shtick gets repeated again and again, so if you don't personally find the shtick funny or memorable, things will get really grating every time this character shows up. The fast pace can actually help in this regard, since the number and length of any given character's scenes is greatly diminished, but it's still annoying to have a character that talks exclusively in lead speak, which also slightly implies issues with tone, since there's an inherent divide between someone getting killed and a clown making bad puns about the accused. Ace Attorney has always staked itself on having a slightly bizarre sense of humor, so even at their worst, these tonal disconnects are not terrible, but they are another symptom of would you look at that? The pacing, since we move much more quickly from a serious scene to a funny one, or vice versa. This time around, picking and choosing things for the good was actually a slight challenge, because Ace Attorney is one of those shows where, rather than having good and bad elements, I felt more like it had bad and not bad elements. A big problem is that, thanks to the lousy production values and unavoidably brisk pacing, this anime doesn't have any substantial advantage over just watching a Let's Play on YouTube, let alone playing the games for yourself. It's such a shame, because glimpses of the show that it could have been do shine through on the briefest of occasions, usually being the climaxes of the trials. So after taking everything into account, as well as my own subjective enjoyment on a scale from F to S, what else would it be but a D?
This is mostly a case of, as with Danganronpa, the Source games being so good that no matter what the adaptation did, it manages to have some alright-ish parts just by following the story and not mucking around with the chain of events. That said, while the series was very noticeably flawed, I question what really could have been done to fix it besides heavily reworking the animation. The experience is just too tailored to being a game to have the same effect as a show. The pacing was doomed to fail without getting an unreasonably high number of episodes for today's industry, and the experience would be unavoidably compromised without the constant internal reactions and scouring of witness testimony, but these things would likely be frightfully boring in a show, or require simply out of this world direction to remain interesting. Put simply, it took the anime actually existing for me to realize Ace Attorney just doesn't really work as an anime. Nonetheless, if you are stricken by a desire to see the series for yourself, it is currently available for legal streaming on Crunchyroll, with a dub release being planned by Funimation as part of the Crunchymation initiative a month or so back. Again, fingers crossed for Regal. And that'll do it. Thanks for watching, have a great day, leave any feedback in the comments, subscribe if you want more. And if there's anything you'd like to see reviewed, by all means, tell me. See you next time.